the functions we've seen thus far can be simplified using Boolean algebra. However, I mean, if the functions are a bit complicated, then it can be quite difficult, you know. Uh, and so we need another way to do that. And the kernel maps helps us in a graphical manner to, uh, more, to simplify expressions much, much more easily. So it will be important for you to understand how these kernel maps operate and be able to what, use them. So at the end of the session, you should be able to what, plot a given function uh, of up to three to five variables on a kernel map, you know, and then using the kernel map, obtain the minimum sum of products, you know, or, or, the, or the product of sums, and then understand the relation between the operations using, perform using the map and correspond, the corresponding algebraic operations. So the things you need to know are kernel maps, rules for kernel maps, three variable functions, and four variable functions. These are the things you should learn how to do in this session by the close of this session. You will not learn everything in the session as you watch this video, but then you need to go to the textbook and read up on it, on how these things actually work. So this is from chapter five of your recommended test, Fundamentals of what? Logic Design. Kernel maps are a very useful tool. They are a graphical way of what? Representing the same functions that we've come across. We normally designate them as K-maps. You know, it's an alternate approach to representing what? Boolean functions. They can be used to minimize Boolean functions. They, it gives you an easy conversion from truth table to K-maps. The simple rules are used for minimization. Um, it's much faster, more efficient than the previous minim minimization techniques such as uh, Boolean algebra. So it's much easier, you know, much, much easier. You don't have to remember all the rules or the laws of Boolean algebra. You can simply do it by just graphically looking at it. Right, so how do you go about it? You draw a table, okay? All rows of a truth table, you convert them into a square, and each square will represent a function, yeah, or a mean term. So for a two-variable function, yeah, A and B, you have four squares. Across here, you have A, and down here, you have B. So across here, this is zero, A is zero here, and A is one there. And down here, b is 0 here, and b is 1 here. So it means that this square here in the middle here represents what? 0, 0. a, 0, b, 0. This square here represents uh, a being 1 and b being 0. This square represents a is 0, b is 1, and this square represents b, uh, a is 1 and b is 1. So alternately form of representing that is this. Okay, and, and so on. So that, that's that. Now, something that I've not mentioned, which you must know, is that it's important, yeah? If you're not aware of that, you would always make mistakes. Notice that for one variable or two variables, it's quite simple because it's only A here. This is zero, this is one. The difference between these two in, only define in one bit, and the same thing here. When we come across three variables or four variables, I will explain that more clearly. Yeah, this is where the gray code comes in. Recall that I told you that in doing kernel maps, the gray codes are used because the squares must differ in only one bit, that the representation must differ in only one bit. Let's say you have a two-variable map, right? And then we have a two-variable map, where not A and B is 1, and A not B is 1. So the function there is not A, A not B, and then B not A. Well, so there are two ones here. There's very little one can do here in terms of minimizing anything. But if you take another 
map this one then you have three places where you have zeros right so you have a b not a b that's a a b not a b and a not b okay this is how that is represented now if you have a three variable map such as this right a three variable map then and the positions that one where the ones are are in these places as indicated and then there are only two zeros there now notice this normally when you write the combinations for b and c you would have gone from zero 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 one one zero and one one but notice that here you went from zero 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 one then one one and then one zero this is where this is a gray code being used now these things they differ from this position to this position, there's a difference in only one bit. From here to here, the bit positions are the same except in one. And again, from here to here, the bit positions are the same except for one. If you had written this, bef uh, the one zero before the one one, then you'd have violated a gray code and the whole thing would not work. So you use a gray code to what? Position these things along the K maps. So how do you go about using K-maps for reducing the expressions? The way we do go about it is to first of all circle all the ones on the K-map. Each, cir each circle represents a mean term reduction. Now once we've done the circling, we can then deduce, uh, minimize and, or, uh, the end and all forms. So the thing is to include every cell containing a one at least once. You encircle the largest possible part of two rectangle. And then the ones must be enclosed in the smallest possible number of rectangles. So those are the rules, you know. So again, you look at that. So if you take this here, there's really nothing you can do with here, this one, because the ones are not adjacent to each other. But if you come here, you can see, you can encircle these ones, right? And then you can also encircle these ones, right? So the simplified form of this, if, if you encircle the first ones here, right? When you go across here, the A gets out, yeah? The A, because you go from 0 to a 1. So A, not A. So that gets knocked out. So you're only left with what? Because you're only left with what? A B, not a B, right? It's the same, actually, these two ones represent not A, B, and A, and then what? Not, um, represents not A, B, and then A, B. So it means, you sort of, you are going across here, the A and the not A will get ruled out, and then you're left with only B. So only B is left here. And then when you go across here, which represents an A not B with an A not B with an AB, the A, the B and not B gets ruled out, and then you're left with an A. So the whole minimized thing that is left with is what? A or a B. This is what we are left with. For the three variable, let's see how we can group them. We say you can take the largest possible ones, yeah, so you take that, and then what also, you can also group that, and then you can group this. So when you do that, this one gives you an A. That one gives you not B, C. And then this one here gives you the B, not C. So there are a number of examples here which you can look at. Uh, uh, again, uh, no, you, can, uh, you can look at. Remember what I told you that you need to use a gray code 
only a single bit changes in code for adjacent map cells, right? So as you go along the cells, only a single bit changes. So the key thing is here, when you change 0, 0, 0, 1, and then you interchange this. So there are more examples here yeah, for you to look at and work out and verify for ourselves that is correct. So to remind you, circle the largest groups, the largest groups possible. Group dimensions must be power of two, you know, and don't forget what it is that you are, what circling means, you know. When you are circling, you are actually trying to, you know, uh, eliminate uh, some variables that those that are not compl are complementing each other. So if you take this example, for example, if you circle this, right, you are, this is changing, A is changing from what, 1, no, no, B is changing from what, 1 to a 0. So B will go out. And if you go down here as well, C is changing, right? So C will go out. So this whole expression, you will only be left with what, an A. Now, three variable functions. Right, let's say you've given a truth table like, which looks like that. There are one, two, three, four ones in the output, so you represent them on the distance. So you've got A and then B, C. So A is 0, 1, and then B, C is 0, 0. So B, 0, C, 0, 0, 1. B0, C1, 1, 1, one, and then 1, 0. Okay? So now, the, uh, each point here represents a, fa a special function. So the, this one here would represent A, not B, not C. This one here will represent not A, B, and C, and so on and so forth. Now, when you have this, yeah, all these cell positions represent specific mean terms, as we said. Now, they may not look so, but then this cell here, the cells here, are actually adjacent to the ones here, you know. So we can actually use the mean term representation, right? So instead of writing the, this, you can put actually ones, uh, the M1, M2, and so etc. to represent them in the table, to represent the information in the table. So we can locate them, the cell positions, number them according to decimal. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And therefore, once you've numbered them, you can then put the uh, mean terms in there and you can, once you know which mean terms you need, you, 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 you circle them accordingly. Right, how then would you plot, for example, that? Uh, that? Well, you can circle these two, for example, and then those, you know, so that will give you the uh, simplified form. You can attempt it for yourself and verify these functions to be, to be, to be true. Now, the four variable functions will do a similarly the same thing, okay? Right? So, for a four variable table, you have A, B, and C, D. So, A, B means that you are going to 0, 0, 0, 1, and then the, your, your gray code comes here, 1, 1, and then 1, 0. That is, instead of 1, 0, you have 1, 1 first before 1, 0. And the same thing goes across here. And it's much easier if you learn to number the cell positions and therefore can easily relate the mean terms to the positions as they are. So uh, for, for a function you have, which is indicating this on that, once you've numbered them, you know you, know you need m1, 3, 4, 5, 10, 12, and 13. So you just put, put them in there. And well, of course, these four are together, you can circle them. These two are together, you can circle them, and then you have minimized your function.
Again, similarly, right, these corners are actually also adjacent and can be combined, you know. So those are the things to take note of. All of this can be combined, it means the whole term goes out. You know, you can combine the corners, and if you combine the corners, it means that some specific things will be left. In some cases, when you do some functions, some cases, you really don't care what is in those positions. So we say those outputs are undefined, or we say we don't care logic. And this can be quite useful when you want to uh, minimize some functions. So for example, you have an incomplete table. Right here, you really don't care what is there. You don't care whether there's a 1 or there's a 0. This place, you don't really care whether there's a 1 or a 0. So it gives the free hand to treat those x's as either 1's or 0's. So for example, well, if I don't care what is here, I can put a 1 here and then group all of these together. And then, of course, you can leave some of the x's uncovered. So it helps to minimize, gives you a free hand. So the don't case is a useful knowledge to have, and that helps to minimize functions. So like I said, if you don't care, you can treat this as a 1, and then you can group this together. And then, of course, you can then group all of these together, the four ones, to give you another function, and so on. So in some situations, we really don't care about the value of a function for certain combinations of variables. These combinations may be impossible in certain contexts, or the value of the function may not matter in, uh, when the combination occurs. In such situations, we say the function is incompletely specified, and there are multiple logic functions that can be used in the design. So we select a function that gives us the simplest circuit as we desire. When constructing the terms in the simplification process, we can choose to either cover or not cover the don't care positions. Right. So this is uh, uh, a question for you to consider. For each of the following maps, find a loop yeah, with a minimum number of terms, which will cover all the ones. And then write down the minimum sum of products for the function 1 and function 2. So that brings us to the end of this session. Thank you.